Hello, I'm Dr. Carlo Karendang, and I'm a psychiatrist. Today, I will talk about how GABA works for anxiety. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. So we know that when you have anxiety, you have overactive fear circuits which are centered on the amygdala. So here is the amygdala here and this is the fear centers this is the fear center of the brain so when you have anxiety the amygdala is hyperactive and the fear circuits that it is connected to so when you have anxiety you have an overactive amygdala and overactive fear circuits which the amygdala is connected to so what happens is is that we have GABA these GABA neurons which actually connect to the amygdala so here's a GABA neuron here and they connect to the amygdala via these connections which are called the synapse so synap the synapse between neurons is how neurons connect to one another and they connect to one another via these neurotransmitters so these are molecules which travel from one, one neuron to another neuron and they basically cross this empty space between them to communicate with each other so we do know that GABA is inhibitory so when GABA so these GABA molecules here when they're released into the synapse and they bind to the postsynaptic receptors here so these receptors these GABA receptors here on the amygdala then what happens is when GABA binds to these receptors it actually inhibits the amygdala and it slows down the hyperactivity of the amygdala and therefore re it reduces anxiety so I'm gonna go through how GABA then how this whole process starts and ends with GABA being released and anxiety being reduced so that's what I'm going to explain right now so again this is the GABA neuron and this is the amygdala so the GABA neuron it actually projects to the amygdala and it communicates via the synapse here so in the GABA neuron there are GABA neurotransmitters in these vesicles so these vesicles then release their contents into the synapse so GABA is released from the vesicles into the synapse the GABA then travels across the synapse binds to the receptors the GABA receptors here and this in turn what it does when GABA binds to these GABA receptors it actually opens up these there's an ion channel that these receptors are part of so when GABA binds to these GABA receptors this ion channel opens up and it lets chloride in so when chloride is let in it actually inhibits the transmission of the neurotransmission postsynaptically so in essence when GABA binds and the chloride ion channel is open then it basically inhibits the neurotransmission and therefore it reduces the hyperactivity of the amygdala so GABA then is also reabsorbed it's recycled by being reabsorbed by what's called a GABA reuptake pump which is similar to other neurotransmitters that we have studied such as the serotonin reuptake pump so GABA also has a reuptake pump to recycle GABA that's in the synapse and the reuptake pump here then pumps GABA back into the presynaptic neuron here which is the GABA neuron so we do know that there are some drugs and supplements oral supplements that actually when you take it they actually block the reuptake of GABA and thereby effectively increases the GABA concentration in the synapse and what that does is when you increase GABA concentration in the synapse by blocking the reuptake pump here is that there is more GABA in the synapse and therefore there's more binding of GABA to these postsynaptic 
receptors and what happens is you have more opening of ion channels and this therefore increases the inhibition of the amygdala and therefore decreases anxiety even more because the hyperactivity is reduced from the increase in GABA from the drug or the supplement that you take. So for example, uh, what blocks the GABA reuptake pump here is an herbal supplement for anxiety called passion flower. So we do know that passion flower actually works by blocking the reuptake of GABA by binding to the GABA reuptake pump here. So this is what passion flower does. And passion flower, by the way, is is contained in Compro, which I have formulated as a natural anxiety supplement. So I will talk more about that in future videos. So this is how GABA then affects the amygdala. It's inhibitory. So when GABA reaches the the GABA receptors postsynaptically, it actually inhibits the amygdala and therefore reduces anxiety. We also know that there are other medications that can affect GABA neurotransmission. So there is also another medication called benzodiazepine, such as Ativan, also called lorazepam by its generic name, or clonopin, known by its generic name of clonazepam. So these are benzodiazepines that actually bind to a different part of these receptors, these GABA receptors here. So they bind. So benzodiazepines actually bind to a different part of the GABA receptors postsynaptically. And what it does is it actually enhances, benzodiazepines enhances GABA neurotransmission. So when you have both GABA and you have a benzodiazepine binding to the GABA receptor at the same time, it actually increases the whole of the ion channel even more, allowing for even more chloride ions to pass through and therefore facilitating the inhibition postsynaptically. So what GABA and benzodiazepines do together is that it further inhibits the amygdala and therefore it reduces anxiety even more. So that's how benzodiazepines works because it binds to a different part of the GABA receptors. Mind you that benzodiazepines are not effective if GABA is not present. So bear in mind that for benzo benzodiazepines to work, GABA needs to be present in order for it to work. Okay, so this is how GABA affects the amygdala. So what you just need to know from this is that GABA is inhibitory so that when you have GABA binding to the GABA receptor, it opens up the chloride ion channel and it inhibits the activity of the, of the amygdala, therefore decreasing anxiety. For more information and help on GABA and anxiety, please visit anxietyboss.com. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. Carlo Carandang.